His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj, expected guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning and a warm welcome to today's edition of the Artha Forum in Singapore. It is a matter of honor and privilege to have His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami amongst us today as the keynote speaker. He is an erudite Vedic scholar who has dedicated his life to spreading the wisdom of the ancient scriptures and the Indian rich Indian tradition and heritage around the world. And over four decades, he has inspired thousands of people all over the planet. So thank you, Maharaj, for being with us here and enlightening us. I look forward to hearing from you. We have an extremely talented, diversified, and distinguished set of panelists today. Uh, thank you very much for not just for your time today, but also the time and effort that you have put together, uh, set aside of the last uh, couple of days in preparation for the panel. I know some of you have flown in from remote parts of the world just a day or two before. Thank you very much. And on behalf of the organizers, I'd like to thank all of you for your time here on a Sunday morning, which is not easy. And the fact that we have kind of an overflowing hall here, uh, we, apologies that we're running a bit short of space, which is a good problem to have, but it definitely shows the growing interest of people to look at the broader perspective than just the mundane and the ordinary that we deal with in a day-to-day -day life every day. Uh, so Artha Forum, many of you, this is our fifth uh, Artha Forum uh, event in, in, in Singapore, and many of you I'm very happy to see have been here in the past, there are a lot of new faces, which is also a great thing. Um, as quite a few of you know, that the forum actively in, seeks to engage and uh, uh, entrepreneur and interest business leaders, professionals, and entrepreneurs to derive from the wisdom of the ancient scriptures and to do business and get satisfaction in doing business without greed and pride, and thus become an instrument of the societal good. Uh, in the last four events that we have had, we have addressed topics like spirituality and material success, can the twain meet, spirituality and sustainable capitalism, and real ethics and values in business. Today's topic is conscious leadership, an interesting and a very broad-based topic as well. Uh, looking at today's uh, state of affairs, rather fearful state of affairs around the world, whether it's in the field of business, economics, or politics, it does warrant a case. Does it warrant a case where we need to look for more leaders who have an internal connection and are driven by a sense of higher purpose than just leaders who are only driven by external goals? Do we all agree that without the internal connection, all our value system, no matter how hard we try to implement it with external tools, will not be sustainable? If we don't have a very good inner reason to withhold my integrity in the face of a provocative situation, then all the value system that we have will fall off in the face of a strong provocation. And that is a matter of internal governance as against the externally imposed governance framework, which is necessary, but not sufficient. As has been borne out by the hundreds of scams, scandals, and crises that we see around us all over the world today. So we eagerly look forward to hear what our esteemed panelists and respected His Holiness have to enlighten us on this topic today. Uh, so before we, the, the format of the, uh, so my name, I'm Soman Chaki, I would uh, be taking you through the, the flow of uh, events today between now and, and suppose around 12.30 or so that we intend to close with lunch. Uh, the flow of the event is as follows, we'll have a very short introduction uh, on, on at the forum, after which we will uh, have the panel discussion. We'll invite the esteemed panelists over here for about 50 minutes, and then we'll go into the keynote speech by His Holiness, 
followed by a combined Q&A session between the panelist and His Holiness, and would strongly recommend and advise and request all of you to make it very interactive and interesting with your, with your questions. So do keep your questions as you hear the panelists, do keep your questions ready if you need to ask any of them something or to His Holiness, and it will be really interesting to have an interactive session. So without much ado, I would like to request uh, Rajiv, Rajiv Sivastav, whose uh, brainchild is at the forum. Rajiv is an extremely successful businessman, uh, a, a serial investor, but most importantly a, a philanthropist who has imbibed the art of giving as a core principle of his business model. Uh, so Rajiv, could you please come over and speak to us for a few minutes on the Arta Forum. Thank you, Suman. Uh, His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj, uh, esteemed panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming here on a Sunday morning and you know giving us your time and we are truly encouraged to have all of you here. I'll just walk you through you know the various events that Artha Forum has uh, had. Small technology glitch, but I'm sure we'll be back soon. Uh, you know, as Suman basically you know explained. So as Suman explained that uh, you know, Artha Forum is a not-for-profit initiative. We are looking to connect business uh, leaders, entrepreneurs, and professionals, and really bring to them the you know the the wealth of wisdom that is there in our ancient scriptures and see how that can be applied in our day-to-day -day life and uh, you know we also have had events you know in different parts of the world we've been having regular events in silicon valley we've had we had in, events in mumbai london uh, you know new jersey and very recently we had this event and i'll take you to the next slide in uh, the bombay stock exchange this was a very recent event this is uh, at a place where, to a large extent, as uh, you know, I recall uh, the earlier uh, you know uh, statement in a movie, Wall Street: greed is good, almost meaning greed is God. And we, uh, to an extent, uh, you know, we wanted that this wisdom is uh, shared in a place which is associated with a lot of greed, which is the Bombay Stock Exchange. The CEO Ashish uh, Kumar was uh, Ashish Chauhan was there. We had, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ronnie Struwala and, you know, one thing is, you know, at all our events, you will just notice that we always have, uh, a, you know, a keynote speaker who's, you know, uh, you know, who's a spiritual leader and, you know, the reason for this, as I have myself attended conferences, I even, you know, went to the World Economic Forum in New York and what I found is that, you know, while everybody else shares a lot of wisdom and shares a lot of experiences but when the same wisdom you know is spoken in the presence of you know uh, practicing leaders if the same wisdom comes from you know a spiritualist it truly enters people's hearts and therefore at the end of the conference it is not that we just simply appreciate wonderful things have been said but the whole environment you know uh, is uh, charged with a spiritual energy which really changes people's hearts and I have seen that at every you know of our conference I'll just uh, so this was in Bombay Stock Exchange uh, we had in Silicon Valley a very famous motivational speaker called Marcy Shimov she's uh, you know written several books and uh, she came to uh, our event you know just to come and attend the event so that's the event you have in Silicon Valley uh, we had uh, Tulsi Gabbard who's the only uh, you know, American uh, Congresswoman who's, uh, who took her oath on the Bhagavad Gita. In fact, uh, when uh, Prime Minister Modi visited uh, New York, she was, uh, you know, she had presented uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is, you know, she, uh, you know written by His Divine Grace Swami Srila Prabhupada, and she presented the Bhagavad Gita to Prime Minister Modi, her own personal copy. And uh, she speaks at various events. She was invited in India. She, of course, speaks in the US. Uh, at various places, so we are glad to have her. We have Damodar Reddy who came to the event. He is the first Indian to list a semiconductor company on Nasdaq. He's, you know, attended a lot of the events and truly, you know, in all his business ventures, incorporating a give back to society. 
I'll take the next slide. Uh, you know, we had uh, an event in Bangalore with His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami as the keynote speaker, and we were very happy. This was at the Leela Hotel, uh, uh, Mohandas Pai. Uh, these are some pictures. Mohandas Pai was there. Uh, you just take it for the other panelists. Just go on. Just one more. Uh, we had uh, Professor Sad Gopal, I think, no, sorry, he couldn't make it, but we did have uh, Meena Ganesh. We had Professor Vasanti from uh, IIM Bangalore and Anush Srivastava, who, you know, for, who's ex Google, and you know, he moderated the panel. So we had a very good list of people who came. Uh, we had uh, several people in the audience. I remember uh, Maharaj was saying that it was very interactive. Everybody really uh, you know, had so many questions. We were trying our best to, uh, you know, uh, accommodate it till late in the evening. I'll go to the next one. Uh, this is uh, again uh, uh, the uh, the panel discussion and the uh, audience uh, in our Bangalore event. Uh, now, in fact, we had one Artha event of all the places at Burj Al Arab Hotel. That happens to be the only seven-star hotel, and uh, the topic for the event was. Plain living, high thinking. So, so you know, but uh, so you could just see that in a place like this, where there is so much of opulence, we are actually trying to tell them that look, you can be in this opulence, but also see if you can change your consciousness. So we had uh, Mohan Jashan, uh, Jashan Lal, and uh, you know several leaders, uh, Ajay Malkani, Ajay Sitaraman, who had come to the event. And while they were intrigued at the topic, they walked back with some, uh, you know, sweet wisdom and a change in heart. The next week, uh, of course, uh, Swamiji had uh, his uh, earlier event in Singapore, where my good friends uh, Puneet Pushkarna, Sanjeev Ayer, who's here today, Puneet's wife Sukanya is here. Uh, we also have uh, Chandru, who's uh, here, and who did I miss? Uh, Anurag, of course. Uh, Anurag should be coming here. He is very much instrumental in organizing this uh, event. Thank you. I'll go to the next one. Uh, we also had uh, in our last event in Singapore, where uh, Jayesh Parekh, we are thankful that you are here today. Uh, we had uh, Dane Anderson, Gautam Banerjee, and uh, Satpal Qatar, who had uh, you know come uh, to the earlier event. This is an event we have in Eco Village. We we'll go to the next. And these are all our earlier, you know, speakers at various events. You know, we have, of course, uh, Ajay Piramal, who's come to a few of our events. Uh, you know, uh, we had the Deputy Governor of Reserve Bank of India. And we are truly encouraged. In fact, uh, Dr. Achut Samant, he, you know, he's one person who does so much for in the field of education. You know, and uh, his whole heart is, uh, you know, he started with uh, practically nothing, and his entire business. In fact, he was actually sharing an example, I remember, where he said that Anil Agarwal met him and he says, Dr. Saman, you know, how come all your employees love you so much? You know, I have big business, but I really don't see everybody, you know, just coming to me because maybe you have the, you know, the financial compensation. And Dr. Saman said that, you know, our whole company is actually an offering of love to both, you know, in a sense to, to the Lord and society. And that's why... You know, our, our thousands of students and employees, they love us. And go to the next. These are, you know, responses from many people who attended our events. I'll go to the next one. And uh, actually, this list is getting bigger. In short, I can just tell you that, you know, many of the people who come to the events, on their own, have come to us and said that, you know, we, in our new business, we would like to include some amount of uh, our ownership, which is 10, 20, 30 or whatever percent they are inspired by, to whatever charity they like. You know, the uh, Artha Forum is not, you know, as I said, it, it is not a fundraising, it is just trying to share knowledge and, uh, you know, when Swamiji speaks and people's hearts change with all, you know, with, with all wonderful esteemed panelists who are practicing this principle in their life, and we are very delighted to see that, you know, the change is happening. There are many more entrepreneurs, young ones. I, I re recently remember, uh, you know, when I had met uh, the anchor group, you know, the, the first time, uh, he almost tried to give me some uh, Bollywood kind of dialogue where he said, look, Rajiv, my dad worked for 40 years. He's created a business which is, you know, which was sold uh, to Panasonic for 670 million. 
Uh, we then, uh, you know, invested in real estate, and he said, "I have one daughter. I don't want to do anything. I am blowing up my son-in-law's money." So <laughs> he just, you know, uh, while it is good to think that way, but uh, surely, you know, nobody sits idle and does nothing. So he did do some things, uh, you know, like I would say some things which he was not happy about later, like buying IPL Kochi team and losing 150 crores there, <laughs> and things like that. But today. Uh, you know, with the you know, um, uh, with his you know, uh, the new inspiration that he has is he has you know abilities in business, and he's saying that if, you know what is exciting him is not to take that one and a half billion and make it five billion. You know, and he said, you know, that doesn't really enthuse me. But right now he's excited to use his talent and say that every new business he does, you know, he will share 10, 20, 30 percent of his uh, you know uh, of his ownership to charity, and he has actually done that. And uh, you know his children. I was more enthused recently when I got a call from uh, his, uh, you know, his brother's son, who has just passed out of Babson, just entering the business world. And he said, "Uncle, I saw this, uh, you know, your uh, various videos on YouTube on Artha Forum, and I'm truly moved by, you know, what I heard the Swamiji speak." And he says that I will commit all my new business ventures, 50% of my ownership to charity. So you know, these are youngsters. They are, you know, uh, they are coming. We are not telling them what to do. They are on their own inspired. I'm just, you know, repeating what I just heard from some of them. So, uh, once again, we thank you all for coming, and we just hope that this will be a very informative, productive, and a sharing session. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Rajiv's passion for this topic shows through the way he speaks about his uh, first-hand experience. Uh, obviously, he doesn't speak about himself, but uh, everybody else, that's great. Uh, so we will now invite our esteemed panelists uh, to come over. I'll just do a quick round of introduction, but I think uh, the panelists will speak a lot more about themselves on the different ideas and angles they have on this topic. Um, let me invite first Vikram. Uh, Vikram is a proven business leader and a very successful entrepreneur in the tech space who has worked across several large global corporates as well as startups like Red Pill, which he founded. So Vikram has uh, uh, very kindly agreed to moderate the panel today. So Vikram, thank you very much. <laughs> Next, would I invite Dr. Charles Chow. He is a very, very interesting personality. I've now known him for the last three days uh, quite well <laughs> with diversified interests. Um, he is the founder and uh, managing partner of East West Group, but more importantly, he is an ardent student of the Bhagavad Gita, and uh, he has authored a book that talks about the applicability of Bhagavad Gita to the world of business. Uh, there's lots to hear from him today. I'm eagerly looking forward to to his to his session. Uh, but he told me that he to introduce him as a Chinese-looking Indian. So <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Next we have a lady, Sumita. Uh, she is another very talented lady and who works across many, many areas, multiple areas. I, I couldn't just stop reading through what all that she has done. But her key area of interest is in the field of uh, education and she calls herself a learner and an educator. And she is the founder of Flowering Tree. Uh, Sumita, we are looking forward to hearing a lot of things uh, and from your experience. So, Please uh, come up. Thank you. We have Subha Vaidyanathan. Uh, is a unique combination of a banker and a yogi. Um, he is the managing director and regional head of uh, retail products and segments uh, for ASEAN and South Asia in Standard Chartered Bank, on one hand, and uh, um, and a crusader for mindful mindfulness and wellness program in the corporate space, on the other. Very, very interesting personality and looking forward to hearing from you, uh, uh, Subhat. Please come up to the <laughs> Last but uh, not the least, uh, Gautaman, uh, who calls himself, or everybody else calls him G-Man. Uh, he has had a very long and illustrious career in the media space, uh, spanning over two decades. He is currently the Chief Operating Officer of Mindshare for Asia Pacific. And like many others, all the others in the panel, he has got a very, very interesting side to his personality, which we will look forward to hear from him more in today's panel. So, G-Man, could you please come over? Thank you for coming with us. 
Uh, so with that brief introduction, we, uh, uh, we are going to spend the next 45, 50 minutes, and I leave the panel in the safe hands of, uh, of Vikram. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, thank you again for spending time on a Sunday. Uh, again, I'm new to, to Artha. Uh, Swamiji, uh, Rajiv, uh, Soman, and the rest of the Artha family, thank you for again giving me this opportunity to participate as part of your journey. Uh, today's topic is conscious leadership. right? When we talk about conscious leadership, the words that everybody uses, and this is not only uh, you know, the words that we are aware of, but words that are used in business, words that are used by traditional businesses and new age internet businesses, uh, are all about mindfulness, are about being self-aware. Uh, it is about having a purpose uh, beyond uh, the obvious uh, and leading to sustainable outcomes. It is about empathy. So a lot of these words we hear and we each individ individually interpret them in a certain way. And we also apply this to business, uh, in our everyday business and, and in the people we touch every day. So I think we're going to talk a little bit about this as we go forward uh, in this session. Uh, and I'm looking to, to the panel to, to uh, share their experiences uh, you know, uh, in their business lives as well as personal lives about the same. Now, when people talk about, I mean, if I look at my own experience, I'm an entrepreneur. I've worked, uh, I started my career in the corporate world. Uh, I've traveled uh, reasonably well, uh, though not as much as some of the panelists as well as Swamiji. Uh, I think uh, uh, I've, I've learned a lot, I've, I've worked in and lived across geographies as well. Uh, and if I look back at where I am today, uh, especially in the tech space, uh, I'm part of a startup uh, which is involved in, uh, in, in software in the internet area. Uh, we've seen this whole uh, new age of data come through, right? There's this explosion of data, there's this explosion of information. Uh, that all of the younger uh, you know, parts of this audience would directly relate to or would thrive on. Uh, but we've all seen that transformation come through. And I think a lot of the data, uh, and there is this new concept called the Internet of Things. You know, the world is about instrumentation. It is about putting in more and more sensors by which you can measure data. And people are trying to, to, to measure it in, in more and more uh, uh, minute mechanisms the external world, right? If you just look at the Fitbits you wear or the phones that you have, each phone on an average, a smartphone has 20 to 30 sensors in it, right? All of this data has been, it is being collected. We are almost obsessed with measurement uh, of the external world. Uh, but yet when you look internally, right, uh, one of the most effective sensors, if, you, if we all would listen to it, is the human being, is our own consciousness, right? And it can interact as, uh, in terms of capability, uh, I think it is way more advanced than the sensors we seek out and the measurement we seek out for. So I think it is you know, part of being self-aware in my own interpretation and my own effort in coming to, uh, to this forum and trying to learn from it uh, is understanding how I can look uh, at, at my own capabilities and how I can listen to my own measurements uh, and make sense of that. Right? So I hopefully you know, uh, with the panel we get uh, some perspectives on these words as well as I look forward to Swamiji's uh, Piece after the after the panel discussion. Uh, so with that, uh, again, I'm privileged to host this panel. Uh, two of the individuals in the panel I've known for some time, uh, and you know, it's a pleasure to have met uh, met uh, two more. And I think uh, these people who, who sit before you have not only understood and internalized, uh, uh, I think, conscious leadership in various ways. They have infused this uh, these qualities in the people and organizations they have worked with. Uh, right. So with that, I'll. Um, I'll, I'll uh, open the panel for discussion, and uh, uh, Gautaman will start with, uh, with you. Uh, Gautaman or G-Man, as, uh, uh, as he's known, uh, uh, again, I think uh, I've known for a year now. Uh, when I think of uh, G-Man, I think of uh, innovation, uh, I think of curiosity, I think of excitement, I think of making ideas happen, uh, and this is what he represents, uh, both uh, you know, in a social circle as well as business. Uh, so, in his own words, uh, he has reinvented himself over the last 25 years being in the media <coughs> business. He's reinvented himself five times over as the, the, as the industry moved from being uh, television centric, then through the entire internet wave and more recently digital and content uh, transformations. 
so again, I think a very interesting perspective, and uh, uh, and again, he he has devoted and, and consciously takes our time to to reflect inward, uh, to also uh, uh, find sense in what he does. Uh, so, Jim, and the first question to you: You're a veteran in the media business. If you could share some of your perspectives on conscious leadership and how it's relevant to to, to business and media. Yeah. Uh, from amongst the people here in the panel, I belong to the industry which is the most material of the lot. Uh, uh, we sell and we sell dreams. Uh, we sell products which normally is not required for you to consume. It's mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> far from being spiritual, so to speak. Okay, so uh, that's the context. Uh, and uh, I've been in this industry for 25 years. Uh, started as a media planner planning for, I was just speaking to Swami as well, for Unilever in the beginning and then now uh, ran the Indian operation which used to handle more than 3,000, 4,000 crores of advertising and now I'm run the shop for Asia Pacific. Uh, it's a very, uh, so to speak, it's a two decade old industry, unlike many other industries, it's pretty young, so to speak. Uh, and we have roughly around uh, 2,000 to 3,000 employees across the region. Uh, the, the point I was trying to make is that an average employee uh, in any office we have across these uh, 16 countries uh, are responsible for advertising uh, for a client. I mean, as a planner, I, when I was uh, five, six years younger, I was deciding how much Unilever would spend. That's uh, roughly around 1,500 crores. It's on my table. And I, I have I was given the responsibility to recommend for a client like Unilever how much to spend, where to spend. That comes with immense amount of power because uh, Sony TV, Z or Star or anybody will just come to your desk and say, please use my channel. You are suddenly feeling that not a small plan, it might be 20 to 30 years old, but a responsibility can be huge to blow money. And you know what, I, what used to happen along with that is parties, they invite you for dinners, somebody will come home and give you a refrigerator. Or somebody will come and give you something else as free gifts to consider a particular program to be advertised or some dinner. You, 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 the lines are blurring. You, you never even know whether it is a gratification or a bribe or a nice gesture of friendship. Uh, that always used to trouble me. You know, then we never know where does it stop, what's ethics, uh, what's right, what's wrong, and uh, should I even go to his house for uh, dinner when somebody calls you? Or should I not even talk to him at all? It, it works both the ways. I need to know him, but I cannot be seen as being with him in a, in a forum where, in, 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 a, in a situation outside that. So uh, it's it made me wonder a lot of time. And you know, the only way I was just speaking to the panelists yesterday when catching up on this topic is this is not a, something where uh, that there can be open for interpretation. When you confuse leadership, is something which has to start from you, from yourself, and everybody who is working for you should know, not by a definition, but by the way you act, by the way you behave, because others don't even, should even have uh, any kind of, okay, it, 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 there's no 50 shades of grain, there's only one shade, it has to be absolute. And that's tough, that's very tough, and that we, in our organization, the only way we do it is to lead by example, so others feel odd to behave in a manner which you are not supposed to and you have to behave right every day, every morning, every day you come to the office. And that's a big learning for me because I think our industry is very young, can be responsible because there's a small plan that does a decision and uh, how to make it happen. It comes out of uh, leading the example. And I hope I'm, people who work for me looks at me and says that I will not do it. <coughs> uh, thank you, Jima. Very interesting. Uh, let's again now move to uh, Dr. Charles. Uh, as uh, I've known Dr. Charles only for a day now, but again, I think uh, his sense of humor is uh, really enlightening. I think uh, I've had a laugh every time I've met him, so I'm sure that you guys get to know him also. He uh, keeps his messages uh, in humor, and I think uh, they're a lot more effective that way. Uh, so, Dr. Charles, you again have, uh, you know, your local Singaporean. Uh, You've headed the Singapore India Business Network as part of the Singapore Trade Board. Uh, all of that is in your profile. But again, I think uh, someone referred to this book you have written, 
which talks about management efficacy and it brings together two, where, you know, two of the most uh, well-known texts, of the, uh, I mean, one being the Bhagavad Gita and the other one, uh, the Sun Tzu, the art of war. One uh, uh, talking about uh, the way we should live, the other one, has, you know, with huge application to business. So you brought these two texts together. So if you can, you know, explain to us your perspectives and how some of the learnings from these two books can be put to to the business uh, and uh, and its relevance. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, these two books, uh, first of all, uh, for the Sutza Art of War, which is always called the Chinese Art of War, can be summarized into one sentence. And I think this sentence, the husbands in this room will know. If you are sure that you cannot win, don't engage. <laughs> and in that book itself, uh, uh, we talk about uh, uh, using spies and modern business and actual competitors of intelligence, and then etc. etc. Now we compare it now with the Gita. The Gita talks about not just the results, it is the way you go about getting the result as what was mentioned in the first panelist. So we talk about Nish Kama Kama, which is Gita chapter 2, verse, 40, uh, verse 47. The essence here is really for you to really to have this Nish Kama. You need to know yourself. Let's take a very simple example, boiling water. And when you put a potato and an egg into the boiling water, the potato turns soft, the egg turns hard. So now you ask yourself, are you the potato or are you the egg? As a leader, now I'm bringing in a third issue, a coffee. You must just grind the coffee and put in the water and then the aroma will come. So you really need to grind the employee before he can deliver. <coughs> the last group is actually like a frog. He adapts himself with the boiling and then he gets boiled in the end he's dead. So many of us, you know, as plain employees, you know, adapt ourselves and adapt until we are totally retired. So application of the Gita, application of the art of war, is just two examples, but the essence of it is really situation. And we do have to know what is inside whether you are the potato, the egg, are you ready the coffee? Or must you change yourself from a frog into a prince? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shelves, again. Like I said, that uh, the references of potato egg, he told me yesterday he's going to use this side. He was wondering all night if, you know, how it's going to come about. Thank you again, very insightful. <laughs> so, Sumita. Uh, Again, you pursued a lifelong interest in human uh, human resources development. Uh, you've again worked in several geographies. Uh, I've again gotten to know you only over the last day, uh, but we've had. Uh, I'm looking forward to the 